Okay, one more time with the Matt Dillahunty Jordan Peterson debate. Now, Jordan Peterson, main argument, the, the important part of the debate. There are parts where it went, went into other territories. I'm just concerned with the one of the main thrusts of Jordan Peterson's work, and that is that, um, as he quotes in another place, to me, this is Jordan Peterson in his own words. To me, I think that the universe that people like Dawkins and Harris inhabit is so intensely conditioned by mythological precepts that they take for granted the ethic that emerges out of that it, it, as if it's just a rational given. And this, of course, was precisely Nietzsche's observation as well as Dostoevsky's observation. So, he, he brings this up again in the debate. He is saying... He has a couple of different ways of phrasing this, but he is saying that the stories that we have been telling ourselves for thousands of years is where we got our moral understanding from. And that the, the idea, the unspoken implication of the atheist argument is that as soon as you do away with God, you know, the sooner you do away with God and the superstitious nonsense known as religion the better off we will all be and we can construct a real, real moral world with a real moral compass based on reason and rational understanding and scientific, scientific explanations and yada, yada, yada. Peterson goes on to say, I'm not arguing for the existence of God. I'm arguing that the ethics that drives our culture is predicated on the idea of God and that you can't just take away that idea away and expect thing to, to, the thing to remain intact midair without any foundational support. Now, he said the, this idea on stage, he didn't say it exactly like that. Matt Dillahunty counters with, just because something is useful doesn't mean it's true. Doesn't mean it is true. But he isn't arguing that it's useful. This is the problem with that counter-argument. He's arguing that it's necessary. He's arguing that it's absolutely essential and it is an idea that he borrowed from Nietzsche. You throw God out of the picture, and we are left in a moral wilderness. That the God idea, the idea of a transcendent morality, the stories that we told ourselves in the Old Testament, are absolutely essential to where we have arrived at as a culture. And if you throw away that moral underpinning, you are going to throw away the very, the very foundation of our society. It is essential to where we are, and he doesn't quite he doesn't quite make the bring the point home as to why it is essential. See, Matt argue, Matt counters with the with the with the standard line of reason that in and of itself is correct. Matt says just because something is useful doesn't mean it's true. Yeah, in and of itself it's correct. He's not saying it's useful. He's saying it's absolutely necessary. It's absolutely essential. And he goes on to argue. Now here is the germ of a very good argument. The beginning of a closing argument, if you will for why religion is absolutely necessary, because he says it is, it is very, very hard to imagine. In fact, it is almost impossible to imagine that something could be so profoundly useful if it isn't at root true. How can it possibly be so profoundly useful isn't, if it isn't, in fact, on some level, deeply true? Now, that is a great closing argument. He has not really fleshed out the second part of that. It's just something that occurs to him, and you can see it on the stage. He, he, he suspects it. He thinks it. It's part of what's compelling him to study religion and move into religion, because he's, he's going, how could these be stories be so, so, have so much to say about life? How could these ignorant goat herders have written a book that has so much deep truth to communicate through the centuries? How could it have been foundational to our society if these deep goat herders were not, if these, these deep goat herders, what are they, deep, if these ignorant goat herders were not in fact in some way being inspired by the living God or some form of deity or, or some form of deep truth? When he is talking about a transcendent morality as a, necessary, as a necessary precept, keep in mind the hidden implication of that is that the morality is transcendent. Hello? If in fact that, that he is correct in his inclinations, 
that a transcendent morality was necessary for the moral ordering of our society as we know it. Keep in mind that morality would be transcendent. Outside of space-time, human, human understanding. Sounds suspiciously like God. Sounds suspiciously like God is orchestrating the whole thing. And that is the thing. Now, he's not really a Christian. So he isn't quite willing to go there. And this is why, you know, when Matt, Matt Dillahunt encounters with his, his counter-argument, you know, he kind of falls back on standard issue apologetics and he kind of, you know, just tries to throw him off kilter and, you know, how do you arrive at that conclusion? You know, how do you even know you're sitting in the room? <laughs> that, that type of thing. But anyways, that's enough for now. Just, just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there for conversation, seeing where it lands. Nobody has to get all excited. We're just having a little, a little chit-chat. 